think everybody's here. And uh, we'll go ahead and begin. Um, we have um, uh, this quarter's Lima Home Pride Awards to present. So I want to ask Pete White and Krista Sprouse to come up and um, talk about the, the awards and introduce their winners. Good morning, everyone. Three Lima property owners will be recognized today as the fourth quarter Lima Pride Home Award winners. The Property Maintenance Code Inspector selects properties that exemplify pride in ownership and provide a model of good maintenance for their neighborhood. The winning properties all make, also make a positive impact within the community and must meet Lima property maintenance standards. Each winner receives a plaque, similar to this, with a photo of their home and a yard sign displayed below that they can keep in their yard for the quarter. Winning properties can be viewed on the city's website and GTV2. And now the fourth quarter 2013 winners are for the north area, 822 North Jefferson Street. The owners are Larry and Suzanne Esmond. Larry or Suzanne, are you here today? Larry, if you'd come up, please. Tell us a little bit about your property, Larry. Well, uh, my property is, as they said, at 822 North Jefferson Street. I've lived there since 1969, and uh, my wife and I have spent uh, many uh, years and uh, much effort in improving and making it uh, livable and uh, hopefully improving a neighborhood, and it, it uh, looks very good in the picture I see here, but uh, we've enjoyed living there, and uh, I do see many homes around Lima who have really improved a lot, Mayor, and I think that uh, possibly this program, and uh, just, it's catching. Uh, you see another uh, property and uh, desire to make yours a little more presentable, so I see a lot of them as I drive around town. So thank you very much for this award. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next area is the southwest. The inspector is Angie Rex, who is out ill today. So I will present the award. Uh, the Lima Pride winner for the Southwest is 1304 Lakewood Avenue. The owner, Marvin and Sandra Weaver. Uh, they were both working today and could not be here, but I'll make sure they get their award. And then our final area is the Southeast. The inspector is Krista Sprouse, and she'll present her award. Good morning. The winner for the Southeast Sector is 1515 East Elm Street, and the owners are Gilbert and Patricia Lotzenheiser. Patricia? No? No. Give, give us a little history of the property. Well. And your own <laughs> Please. We've lived there 36 or 37 years, and when we first moved there, we had two kids, and we were really didn't know what we wanted to do, but now that we've done it, we're really proud of our home in the Great. Lima area. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we all know that when a property is a problem in a neighborhood, it tends to drain the incentive for folks um, to fix up. And similarly, when properties are well-maintained, it uh, adds energy, positive energy, and, and encouragement to others. So we appreciate the investment of time, the money, uh, the talent that goes into your properties. It's very, we're very grateful for it. And, and we want to be deliberate about sharing that good news. So it is a, the photos are on the city's website. So if you've got family members that aren't in the community, uh, maybe living in Alaska or somewhere else in the world, uh, send them the city's website and they can also applaud your efforts. So thank you very much. Um, also today we have representatives of the Red Cross and United Way here. Dave Collins, Tracy Duncan, and Shannon O'Neill. And I think they're going to talk about blood. <laughs> blood, yes. Come on. Thank you, Mayor. Allen County residents celebrate the annual day of caring, dozens of community service projects, 
a goal to collect over 125 units of blood, free t-shirts, all part of the Allen County Day of Caring on Tuesday, October the 15th. Red Cross has been a participant in this event for some years now. We're extremely proud to be associated with the United Way of Greater Lima and of course our regional blood region, the Indiana Ohio Blood Region. Here to talk a little bit about the United Way and the blood region, I have Shannon O'Neill and Tracy Duncan and I'll turn the mic over to them. Good morning. I would just like to say that the United Way is focused on bringing people together to meet pressing needs that we have here in our community and in this case the need is donating blood and it saves lives so um, we continually see the ripple effect of just one person donating blood with the potential to then help three people from that single donation so it's so essential that people come out and support this effort here in our community I actually think that our day of caring is coming at an especially relevant time with it being breast cancer awareness month um, many people are surprised to find that cancer patients need blood during their chemotherapy treatments. So if you are passionate about this cause, think about donating as an opportunity to make a lasting impact in the life of a cancer patient. So we thank you for this opportunity to speak here today and come on out and support our cause. Thank you. Um, Shannon mentioned the, the tie-in between blood donations and cancer and that is certainly an important uh, tie in when I have school tours that come through our facility in Fort Wayne, I say, Does anybody have a family member who maybe was in an accident or was in surgery and needed blood? And you might have one or two hands go up. Does anybody have a family member with cancer? Every single hand goes up. And so if you think about all the people out there who are battling cancer, and we have patients and family members who say, The only bright spot was that transfusion. The only time my child felt like a child again going through leukemia was when they were able to get a blood transfusion. And um, as Shannon mentioned, each donation can help save up to three lives, and that's because we can break the blood down into three components. So we encourage everyone to keep that in mind. Celebrate the day of caring. Come out. Show that you care about your community. We know Lima is certainly uh, a fantastic community in that regard. We always have wonderful turnout at these blood drives. So we will be at the Allen County Chapter House next Tuesday from 7 a.m. until 6.30. Uh, we'll have insulated cooler totes for everyone who donates. QP will have some food there. And you can also enter to win one of four $50 gas cards. So we hope to see you next week. So should someone just show up, or do they need to call and register? You can certainly call and schedule an appointment. That will get you in and out a little bit faster. You call 1-800-RED-CROSS or go to redcross.org. Um, if not, you are certainly welcome to walk in. We'll be happy to see you either way. Thank you. Very good. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor. Good luck with next Tuesday's drive. And uh, from the Humane Society, Kat Kuhn Bourne is here to talk about an upcoming event for uh, those with puppies. Yes, this is, this is a definitely a dog-centric event because it's called Strut Your Mutt. Um, there's two, it'll be this Saturday in Faroe Park and there's two different ways people can participate if you have a dog. We encourage you to bring your dog out Saturday morning. We're going to do, um, we'll have some contests. There are three contests for the dogs to participate in. One is a talent contest. So show a, have your dog show off all of their wonderful tricks that you've taught them over the years, all the fun things they can do. We've had dogs catch frisbees in amazing ways. We've had dogs who sing. We have had dogs who answer telephones. There's all kinds of different things that they do and it's always fun to watch. Another component another contest because it is October is a costume contest so you can try out your pooch's Halloween costume and bring that out we are going to have a Halloween a howl Halloween party at the shelter um, the following Thursday I believe that's the 24th it's a Thursday before Halloween so you can test run the costume at strut and then bring it out and see you know chances to win in prizes in both places and then the third contest for the dogs and their parents is a pet and pet parent look-alike contest now I have to tell you that the same gentleman has won this two years in a row with his pug. They are absolutely adorable. He dresses up just like the dog and you know they say after over time you kind of start looking like your pet. Well he does in a good way but it's, it's very cute so we encourage you to come out for that. The other component of the day if you don't have a dog to walk around the park and take part in contests and games and things is a 5k. So starting first thing in the morning, starting at 8.30, we have a 5K run walk that will utilize the river walk. So it's a beautiful walk, 
5K is not quite three miles. It's a wonderful walk if you're not a runner. And it's a great run. Um, start the day off on a Saturday. With that, there will be um, chip timing by the Lima, Lima Run and Jog Club. T-shirts for the runners have been donated by Quick as a Wink. We've had a lot of great support from sponsors this year. It starts with check-in for the 5K at 8. The 5K starts at 8.30. Check-in for signing up for the contest and the dog walk is at 9. And the dog walk portion starts at 10.30. And the contest will be out the rest of the day. We have vendors. We'll have our adoption van out. It should be a nice day in the park. And it's all around the Rotary Pavilion. So we hope to see you out there. Thanks. Hopefully the weather is as beautiful yeah. on Saturday as it is today for that event. Um, lastly, this morning, Lewis Shine is here. Lewis is the, I think the term is owner of the a new professional basketball uh, franchise here in town, and he's going to tell us about what's coming. Lewis, welcome. Um, just want to thank Mayor um, openly. He's always supported the different things that I've done in Lima. Um, whatever I put my hand to, he's always been behind me, all the way back from um, when we used to do projects over your house for school when we were in Lima Senior. <laughs> so thank you for everything. Um, my name is Lewis Shine. Um, real quickly, I'll just um, go down the history. Um, I went to Lima Senior, graduated in 1998, um, 11th in my class. Uh, went to Miami University, played college basketball there, um, graduated with my undergrad in exercise science. I did my master's coursework there. Um, after college, I played a year of pro basketball, um, found myself back here. Um, the team that I played pro um, with was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and after I got done playing that season, that's when Katrina happened, so that team didn't exist anymore. So <coughs> brought me back home, um, you know, start, started in the workforce. Um, I was a youth director at the YMCA, um, personal trainer. Um, I started back then with my youth ministry at church, um, and that brings me to today, still doing that. Um, some of you may know we had a team called the Lima Explosion that was here. Um, the first year with them, I was the PR and marketing director. Um, second year, I was the general manager. Um, that, that was last year. And after last year, um, that team, the, the owner, decided to move the team to a different city um, that was closer to where he was. So that team um, moved out of the city. So that opened it up for me to be able to own my own team, which was something that I always wanted to do. Um, so, um, you know, I, I went to um, talking to different leagues and stuff like that, and I ended up talking to a league called the PBL. Um, it's called the Premier Basketball League, and this league is, is actually a blessing to be a part of it because it's actually two levels below the NBA. So it's um, in, a, in a much better league than, than I've experienced in the past. So with that, um, this is my first season. Um, I've been at, you know, just going about everything, getting the word out for a couple months here. Um, um, this year we'll be playing at Lima Central Catholic High School. Um, Preseason actually starts in December. Um, the regular season starts in January and we'll run, we'll run, run through April um, with playoffs being at the end of April. But it's a very awesome league because um, we have a, a great relationship with the NBA and the D League. Um, we are considered minor league and not semi-pro. Um, there's, there's a huge difference there, um, but we are considered minor league. And we have a great relationship with the other leagues being that um, a lot of the players from these leagues, um, especially the PBO, um, they have a lot of movement going up into the NBA and the uh, NBA D League. There's a, a player from the Rochester team that just got invited to the Philadelphia 76ers training camp. So it, it's, a, it's a lot of upside, but one of the reasons I really, really want to do this in my city because I, I believe in Lima. Um, originally from Chicago, so I came here in 93. But my family's here, my roots are here, I pretty much grew up here. And I feel like a lot of young people around my age really don't give it a chance here, so they leave. But I believe in Lyme. I believe it can be great. And I want to use basketball, since it's my niche um, and being a tool, um, use it to help to assist in blessing this community and making it a better place. So right now we're just getting things structured, I'm getting a good foundation. We're, we're targeting different companies that we've been going out to talk to. So any type of sponsorship or partnership, we definitely welcome, welcome it. Um, it's definitely going to take um, more than just um, you know, myself to make a thing like this happen. I, I definitely welcome all the help possible. But this is something that I wanna, want to be established here and be here and never leave. Um, because we have a great generation coming up behind myself and I want them to have something, you know, to, to be prideful about in terms of our city. So um, if anybody wants to contact us, you can call us at 419-549-6426. 
Um, and also you can email us at thelimaexpress at gmail.com. Where are you recruiting your players from? Um, we're looking at some of the players that have been here locally, um, been to some of the colleges, ONU, um, UNOH, um, Lima Senior, you know, have went out of town to college and came back and they're in the area. Um, but also in a couple of weeks, I have to go to Bloomington, Illinois, where we're going to have a league-wide combine. So all the 12 owners, including myself, will be there. We'll be able to scout out different talent. Um, and hopefully we can see somebody there that we can bring on board. And do you have a schedule yet? Schedules will be released within the next month. Um, so we'll definitely get that, you know, get that to the press and everything like that. Great. Well, good luck, Louis. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Sounds like it. I attended a couple of the Lima Explosion games last year, and uh, they were absolutely terrific. It was a really fast-moving game, and uh, they were, I mean, I was impressed. And, and the fact that uh, Lima Central Catholic's making the, their facilities available to the league is great and very generous as well. So good to have you and good luck. Our first, well, you're not, I guess you're not the first um, owner of a professional franchise here. I think uh, Tom Sawyer years ago had a local, but it's great to have you doing this and investing in our community that way. Great. I believe that's all that we have for today, so we'll break down for interviews. Thank you.